70 years ago, on June 25, 1950, soldiers of the People's Army of Soviet-backed North Korea stormed across the 38th parallel and invaded the pro-Western Republic of South Korea, intending to destroy the rival government and create a unified communist state. By July, American troops would enter the war on South Korea's behalf. Thus began the first major armed conflict of the Cold War. The submarine force started the war with much of its legendary World War II fighting fleet in mothballs, reduced in strength by the drastic cutbacks in defense spending after World War II. At the time of the invasion, the U.S. Navy had only four submarines war deployed in the Western Pacific. Widely scattered from Japan to Hong Kong to the Philippines, the four boats quickly set sail for the naval facilities at Yokosuka, Japan, which would serve as the major operating base for Westpac submarines throughout the war. While submarines in the Western Pacific were converging on Yokosuka, the Pearl Harbor-based submarine Pickerel was also underway and headed for Yokosuka to augment the Pacific forces in case the Soviet Navy should enter the war. Pickerel had recently earned distinction for completing a 5,200-mile voyage from Hong Kong to Pearl Harbor in 21 days while remaining submerged, setting the record for the longest distance ever traveled by a submerged diesel-electric submarine. She is about to earn a few more distinctions. On July 18th, Catfish sailed south from Yokosuka, followed the next day by Pickerel, just in from Pearl Harbor. Together, they shared the honor of conducting the first submarine war patrols of the Korean War. Their mission? Conduct reconnaissance of the China coast, observe the pattern and volume of coastal traffic, and appraise the fleet commander of any communist threat to Formosa or any possible Chinese intervention in the war. On July 30th, Pickerel received orders to return to Yokosuka for a higher priority assignment. While Pickerel was in port awaiting orders, a new boat from San Diego arrived to bolster the submarine forces in the Far East. The troop-carrying submarine Perch, a veteran of World War II, Perch had been converted to carry a huge tank after the superstructure for rubber boats and amphibious equipment. Plans were made for a hit-and-run amphibious operation in Korea. Pickerel would do the reconnaissance and photography of the objective, and Perch would land a contingent of commandos to cut off the North Korean logistic support to its forces in the south. On August 14th, Lieutenant Commander Paul R. Schratz, commanding Pickerel, led the sub into the Sea of Japan to conduct its Federal Reconnaissance Survey off the east coast of North Korea near Wonsan, a zone designated Area 7. Unbeknownst to Schratz, the Russians and North Koreans had been laying the most extensive minefield of the war in the area around Wonsan. Pickerel's daring patrol marked the first venture of an American submarine into the waters of an armed enemy since the conclusion of World War II, and earned for her crew the first of only two submarine combat insignias awarded in the Korean War. One month later, Perch used the data compiled from meticulous track charts and over 500 photographs gathered by Pickerel to aid her amphibious operations. On September 11th, Pickerel departed to Kuska on her third and final Korean War Patrol. Just as 230 ships of Joint Task Force 7 steamed toward the Korean port of Incheon, but on September 15th, they would launch an amphibious assault, 110 miles behind enemy lines. Pickerel, however, was heading north and across the Sea of Japan toward the Russian port of Vladivostok. On September 26th, Pickerel had a major intelligence coup. While on patrol in the La Perouse Strait, he contacted not one, but three Soviet Charlie-class submarines heading directly toward the American carriers, which had entered the Sea of Japan to begin airstrikes on the retreating communist forces from the Incheon Offensive. The same course, however, would also take the submarines to the Soviet base at Vladivostok. With torpedo tubes ready for firing, Schratz recalled, poised on the edge of immorality, I quickly reviewed the alternatives, then gave the order, firmly and with conviction, to shoot pictures. Following the success of these first patrols, the Navy chose to fully exploit the stealth that submarines offered and immediately put their covert operating capability to use throughout the Korean theater. By the war's end, the American submarine's superiority in intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance would equal its World War II predecessor's anti-shipping prowess. The strategic, operational, and tactical intelligence gathered by Pickerel and her fellow submarines contributed not only to the overall intelligence picture of the war, but also to future Cold War efforts and served to confirm the value of the submarine force to the national security of the United States. <laughs>